lovely welcome to yet another SIDCO National Field Week uh, program brought to you by SIDCO Zambia. Today we're discussing good agronomical practices with emphasis on planting population. And with me in studio is Adrian Chivanga, who is SIDCO Zambia Chief Agronomist. It's good to have you. Good to be here, thank you. And uh, I'm sure we'll get and more understanding into what is at hand today and as far as uh, uh, good agronomical practices are concerned. But before we delve into the matters, let's talk a sh take a short break. Yo! Bandy! I'm done sure. Hmm. How come your crop is so much better than mine? I mean, <laughs> we are neighbors. My farm is right next to yours. <laughs> uh, my dear, this is an open secret. What do you mean? I switched to Sidico ever since. My harvest has been good. Sitko! Sitko has got the right seed for every farm land. Sure. See, my friend, I'm telling you, just contact them and find out which is the right seed for you. <laughs> Increase your yield this season by using Seedco Climate Smart Seeds. Call or visit your nearest Seedco depot for more details on our climate smart products. Seedco, it starts with the right seed. This is the Sitco National Field Week program. The National Field Week running from the 22nd to 26th of March. Let's first catch up with uh, uh, Franklin and Kala in the field as he talks about plant population in maize. Welcome to the plant population block. Here we are looking at the good agronomic practices, focusing on the ideal plant population for yield optimization for the different maize seed varieties. In this block, we have four entries in terms of plant populations. We have 75,000 plants per hectare, 65,000 plants per hectare, 55,000 plants per hectare, and 45,000 plants per hectare, which we want to show farmers the ideal plant population in order for them to optimize the yields. Best plant population for maize at the moment is between 50,000 plants per hectare to 60,000 plants per hectare, with 55,000 plants per hectare being the average. In terms of yield, lower plant populations have shown reduction in terms of yield of around 25 to 35%. And then when you hit around 55,000 plants per hectare, it's shown ideal and the most yields that farmers have realized. Beyond 55,000 plants per hectare, if you hit, let's say, beyond 65, that's 65 to 70,000 plants per hectare, what's been realized is that yields have gone down by 25 to 35%. That's because plant, plants are crowded in, uh, in a field when the plant population is quite high. There will be competition for nutrients, uh, there will be competition for sunlight, so you'll have tall plants that will just be lodging and that uh, you know, translates to losses for, for, for a farmer. So the most high ideal has been 55,000 uh, plants per, per hectare. So in our block here with the populations that we've planted, uh, over the past three seasons we've consistently done trials and we've seen consistent uh, results in terms of the most ideal plant population. What we've realized is with the lower plant population of 45,000 plants per hectare, you'll have a lower number of plants in a hectare. Regardless of the size of crops that you realize from such a field, the number of plants in there will be low and the numbers that you put in your bags finally will be very low and the yield uh, won't, won't meet the ID, won't, optim won't, won't be optimized. And then when you, we move to the 55,000 plants per hectare, what we've realized is that plants are going to be standing very well in the field and the ultimate yields that farmers realized is going to be uh, very high. So in terms of the spacing, with our trials that we've been doing, interval spacing for the different var varieties that we've planted here, from one row to another, the spacing has been 75 centimeters. So at 45,000 plants per hectare, that's in one meter in one row, there are four plants. That shows very low population. Then at the sweet spot, which is the 55,000 plants per hectare, from one row to the other, it was the usual 75 centimeters, but in one, in, in one meter, within a row, we have around five plants, on average five plants. So that five plants is the most ideal. Then at 65,000 plants per hectare, uh, the interval spacing was the same, which is 75 centimeters, but within one meter in a row, the number of plants were six, 
and in the 75,000 plants per hectare, the number of plants in a row were seven, and then from one row to another, it's the same 75 centimeters. So now the key message for farmers is that for you to realize the youth, to exploit the potential that's hidden in the genetics in different varieties, you have to follow the ideal plant population. And the ideal plant population that we are recommending is on average 55,000 plants per hectare. In terms of impact uh, of the plant populations, I'll start with the lower plant population. Lower plant population, you have fewer number of plants in a hectare. For higher plant populations, which I mentioned the 65,000 plants and above, what's realized is that uh, firstly, your crops will be competing for nutrients. Nutrients won't be enough. The other thing is that your crops will be competing for sunlight. The other thing, your crops will be competing for water. So you have very tall plants that will be you know, competing for light, uh, very tall and uh, the stems are going to be thin and that leads to lodging. And when plants are lodging, uh, that causes losses on the farmer side. And the other thing is that even the cobs, if you look at the cobs where plant, uh, that's planted on high populations, you realize that the cobs are very small. And as a result, definitely the yields will be compromised. Thank you so much, Franklin. But before we get into a brief uh, discussion, uh, let's also join Sanjita Patel uh, looking at plant population in soya beans. In this virtual national field week, we have four uh, different populations starting from 250,000, 350,000, 450,000 and 550,000 plants per hectare. This will be able to show you what population you will be able to plant to get the best yield from the varieties that we offer in our basket. From the plant populations that we've, uh, uh, we've been planting in the past years, we've found out from our research that at 350,000 plants per hectare, that's where we got the most optimum yield uh, from our soybean crop. Uh, Reason being is because the plant has enough space to actually uh, grow out. It's not competing with other plants like you would if it's, it's at a higher population. And also it's, going to, it's got enough plants in, in a hectare to give you the yield that you require. And normally the spacing that we use for 350,000 plants per hectare is between 36 to 40 centimeters in row spacing. In a meter, uh, when you're doing your population count, you need to look at achieving somewhere between 30 uh, to 40 plants per square meter for you to know that you're achieving the 350,000 plant population. So from the past three years that we've done trials on this uh, block, with the different populations that I've mentioned, we've consistently seen that at 350,000 plants per hectare, the highest yield was attained. When you go down to 250,000 plants, we notice a 20% uh, deduction in yield. And on the other end, when you go to 450,000 plants, there was about a 10% decrease in yield. When you go further to 550,000 plants, that was another 10% decrease, which was about 20% in total from your optimum 350,000 plants per hectare. Reason being, if you put your plants at very high population, one, you will uh, notice lodging, that means your soybean might fall over, which also makes it hard to combine uh, or to harvest your soybeans. Your disease pressure will be very high because there is no aeration flowing into your, your plants. There is also very, there is a lot of competition for nutrients and sunlight and other uh, factors that are needed for a soybean crop to grow uh, perfectly. Next thing I'll be talking about is inoculant. Uh, most farmers do not know the importance of inoculating your soybeans. Soybeans has a potential to produce its own nitrogen for it to give you the optimum yield that it needs. Fertilizing soybeans is very expensive if you had to do it. Actually, if you had to fertilize uh, soybeans to try and get the yield out, you cannot afford it, you just make a loss. So 
uh, the soybean plant has been made in a way that it can produce its own nitrogen, but we need to help it. And that's uh, where inoculant comes in. Inoculant is a bacteria that you add to your seed uh, when, you, when you're planting it, which will pull the nitrogen from the air and make it available to the plant so that it can be used. One thing to look for is when you're choosing your inoculant is look for the bacteria in the packet. When you go to a store, ask your, your store guy there to show you how many bacteria cultures are in your inoculant. The more bacteria cultures you have, the better your inoculant. When you plant your seed, after six weeks, try and pull out your soybeans from the field to check for these nodules. They look like little balls on your, on your, on your roots that grow. When you cut them open, they should be pink. If they're pink, it shows they're alive and they're manufacturing that nitrogen that's needed for the plant. Very interesting insights. Early on, uh, Franklin, looking at plant population in maize and just uh, been having uh, Sanjita Patel looking at plant population in soya beans. Uh, let's get uh, more insight uh, from uh, Adrian Chivanga, who is the chief uh, uh, agronomist. And uh, again, welcome to, uh, to the program. But um, the issue there seems to emphasize on getting the population right. Yes. Break it down for us. Sure. So uh, getting the population right, like uh, both Franklin and Sangita said, is about planting the right number of, uh, of seeds in a hectare. Mm. And uh, uh, they did emphasize that it's about uh, you targeting between uh, 50 to 60,000 plants per hectare for maize, and then about uh, 300 to 350,000 plants per hectare on soybeans. Uh, critical uh, to hitting that uh, amount of plants per hectare is because that the yield at the end of the day is contributed by each plant. Uh, I, I, I would take you back to our primary school days, Franklin, when, uh, when they would say if, if so much weight can be lifted by so many people, how many people can lift so much weight? And so uh, to using that as an example, I would tell you that if we are planting less than 50,000 plants per hectare, they will only contribute to give us so much uh, hectare, okay. uh, uh, so much tonnage. They can only, uh, 40,000 plants per hectare for maize, they can only lift probably seven tons per hectare okay. uh, uh, at their optimum. So if we want to really target 10 and 12 and mm. optimize the potential of our varieties, then we begin to play with uh, the right population, which research has shown us that it is in between 50 and 60,000 plants per hectare for maize. For soybeans, the six tons per hectare that Kelvin talked about have been achieved with 350,000 plants per hectare. Anything less gives you lower yields. Anything higher than that begins to give you uh, um, uh, uh, lower yields too mm. because of the law of diminishing returns. So it's, it's against the common theory, well, maybe from uh, generations passed on to me that the more you plant, the better. Y y y yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, it is against that theory. It really uh, uh, leans together towards the law of diminishing returns, mm. where uh, because of competing uh, 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 plants that now begin to compete for fertilizers, mm -hmm. for space, for sunlight, for carbon dioxide, for, for carbon dioxide and other production factors. That now results into them contributing much, much uh, less than at their optimum. So it's almost uh, like having, is it, is it almost close to having, uh, uh, w w what do you call them, uh, weeds around? Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the like, same uh -huh, they okay. are the same uh, 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 um, crop, crop mm -hmm. family of plants, but then they eventually, some of them actually do not even give you a crop. They would mm. have eaten some of the space, utilized the season, but they will, they will have a very small cob. Because of the and, competition. And, and all they've been mm. is a cob. Okay. Sure. Well, um, let's go back to Franklin, perhaps. Uh, as he addresses the issue of hybrid uh -huh. and uh, open pollinated uh, varieties or OPV in maize seeds. Sure. 
Welcome to the hybrid OPV and recycled seed block. What we are trying to show farmers in this block is the difference between hybrid seeds and uh, the OPVs and uh, recycled seed. Hybrid seed varieties are varieties that are produced from controlled cross-pollination where there is a combination of different superior uh, parents in order to come up with the final seed variety which is superior in terms of uh, performance. For open pollinated and recycled seed varieties, there is no control in terms of how they are produced. Advantages of hybrid seed varieties. Firstly, in terms of yield, hybrid seed varieties are high yielding as compared to recycled and uh, OPVs you realize that in terms of yield, the hybrid seed varieties are very high yielding. Uh, if you look at farming today, we are looking at increasing our productivity, high productivity for each farmer, and that can only be realized by adoption of hybrid seed varieties because with them, the yields are high. The second advantage of hybrid seed varieties over other varieties is that in terms of pest and disease uh, resistance, Hybrid seed varieties are bred to resist or to, uh, tolerate, you know, several pests and uh, diseases. The other thing is that hybrid seed varieties, in terms of adaptability across different environments, hybrid seed varieties are bred to fit the different agroecological zones and environments that you find in Zambia. So you realize that adaptability, they will adapt very well compared to open pollinated and uh, recycled uh, seed, seed varieties. The other advantage is that, uh, you know, in terms of um, management, um, hybrid seed varieties are very friendly to farmers in terms of management. They are bred to ensure that they are so friendly in terms of nutrient use, uh, in terms of uh, tolerance to several adverse uh, conditions. The other advantage of hybrid seed varieties is uniformity. You find that if you have a crop of a hybrid seed in a field, the crops that you are going to produce are going to be uniform. You will not find where there is a very small cob and a very big cob. This one is this color and the other color. With hybrid var seed varieties, you will find uh, that uniformity. And then the other thing is that fitness for the market. In terms of today, several markets require different traits or different characteristics in different seed varieties. So you will find that hybrid seed varieties are bred in order to respond or to specifically you know meet certain uses end uses so you realize that uh, if you adopt hybrid seed varieties in terms of uh, the use uh, for those uh, seed varieties or the crop that you produce it's going to be easy for the farmer so now looking at what we are encouraging farmers now the increase in terms of productivity increase in terms of yields you know moving from only relying on uh, food security to food surplus the only way to go is adopting hybrid uh, seed varieties because you are sure that in terms of yields, they will be superior in terms of uh, yield, you will realize very good yields. In terms of adaptability in different uh, environments where farmers is found, the hybrid seed varieties are going to adapt very well. In terms of uh, tolerance to the different adverse uh, climatic conditions, you still see hybrid varieties are performing very well. So that is the reason why we say farmers are supposed to adopt hybrid seed varieties in order to create all those efficiencies in terms of uh, crop production. Thank you, Franklin. So this issue of OPV and hybrid has a big impact on yield, uh, as well as uh, the harvest at the end of it all. Is that correct? It is. It is, Franklin. Um, seed uh, is a science that has been developed for so many years. And uh, for Zambia, we shouldn't today be talking open pollinated maize varieties, really. And the major reason is because um, uh, the major reasons are that hybrids have been developed to respond to the challenges and, uh, of, of agroecologies. Right. And so they are fit for specific ag agroecologies. And, and, and op an OPV, even the improved ones, uh, do not answer to the needs for high yields. They do not answer to the needs of consistency in terms of uh, uh, disease tolerance that Kelvin uh, highlighted uh, in, in, in the, uh, on the second day. And um, they do not even respond to the needs of the desired quality on mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. And so to see that farmers are still lingering with 
OPV is, is really bringing the nation backwards in terms of productivity. Okay. My passion is to really drive farmer productivity and uh, uh, at Sitco we say it starts with the right seed. So if it's not the right seed, there is no amount of effort that will come and change results right. and yields. Well. And so hybrids is a way to go. We've developed the, the technology over time. We cannot be uh, staying uh, on, on, on the same plane that will not take us to, to a home of bumper harvest. Right. Sure. As I let you go, it's a virtual uh, meeting that you're having. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, how's it going so far? Going good. I enjoyed the first day. I enjoyed the second. I, 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 I've, I've sat back with my family. I've called every one of my, my farming mm -hmm. uh, 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 family members and friends that I know to stick around because that, uh, what, what has been packaged this week is, is game changers. Right. It's, a, it's a missing link. Zambia has got the, the right uh, uh, seed varieties. Take away the OPVs that we've uh, uh, talked against here. And uh, we've got the, the, the right support inputs in fertilizers because we've got the biggest brands in the world come to set uh, best in Zambia. We've got the, the Rolls Royce of chemicals. And what is missing is really this knowledge that we are spreading right. uh, despite uh, against the odds of COVID. Right. And, and if the farmers will then bring this missing input and, and, and fuse it into the right seed right. and the right uh, support input, then we're on our way to... Excellent. Bumper well, habit. thank you very much, Adrian. And always, you know, we look forward to more education from uh, your end as CIDCO. And uh, keep up the good work. Always a pleasure. Okay, thanks. on day four, it's uh, been Adrian Chivanga, Chief Agronomist, uh, Sidco Zambia, as we delve into issues of good agronomical practices and, in particular, plant population. Thank you for watching and uh, do stick around in as far as Sidco is concerned. It's your best choice. Goodbye. Thank you.